Hello guys welcome back in Goku Manhua let's continue. In this chapter, after eliminating two key members of the Dark Magic Society, Eluan cleaned the blood off his hands. As he looked over the lifeless body of the man he had known as Barbados, he couldn't help but wonder what secrets the society held. He noticed an unusual earpiece lodged near Barbados's ear. Curious, he picked it up and realized it was a communication device. He hesitated, debating whether to destroy it and sever any link to the society. But then a thought struck him, he could use it to lead the society right to him, challenging them on his terms. As he weighed the earpiece in his hand, the full moon rose over the distant snowy peaks, casting an eerie glow. Eluin felt his energy pulse, a dark crimson hue swelling within him. He clenched the earpiece, activating it with a deliberate gesture, and whispered a taunting invitation for the fearless to find him before sunrise. For once dawn came, he would be gone, leaving nothing but the cold remains of his enemies. He glanced at the mountain path stretching ahead of him, calculating the time it would take to reach Kyoto. With his current strength, he could reach the city in just a few hours, faster than any human could imagine. Yet as he prepared himself for the journey, he found himself captivated by the moonlit landscape. It reminded him of something distant, almost forgotten, a memory that he couldn't quite place. In that moment, Eluin resolved to take down the lioness, Susu, not for power or vengeance, but to sever a past that continued to haunt him. He needed to erase every trace of the life he had once known, leaving no loose ends. Turning back to the body of Barbados one last time, he left the scene. He knew the society would pursue him and that the forces trailing him would not rest until he was gone. But for now, he welcomed the chase. Publicly, Lu Shang knew he couldn't let Su perish, at least, not in a way that would draw attention. Her death would raise questions, and he couldn't afford any trace of evidence. The weight of this dilemma stirred a creeping sense of guilt within him. Determined to find a solution, he pulled out his phone, browsed for a moment, then dialed a number. He knew he had to act carefully, considering his growing reputation and the power of his network. The phone rang until Hengu, immersed in her laboratory work, finally answered. She was balancing a test tube in one hand, and the sound of Lu Shang's voice caught her off guard. With a note of surprise, she greeted him as Marshal Saint, then inquired curiously about Elder Chen's birthday. Lu Shang, his eyes gleaming, replied with a casual tone, explaining that he needed to discuss a small family matter. Hengu didn't trust a word Wan had said. She simply let his words pass, dismissing them as she noticed he had moved his phone away. With a calm smile, he told her to send him a message, promising to support her after the event. Then, he ended the call, leaving Hengu holding her phone, her curiosity deepening as she scrolled through messages, wondering what Wan was really planning. Meanwhile, a confident smile crept across Wan's face as he considered his next move. The plan was set, he would make a dramatic appearance at the Chen family celebration, orchestrating the perfect scene with Hengu's unwitting help. Her reluctance didn't matter, he only needed her presence to make this scheme work. Elsewhere, Liu Wan roamed through the area, lost in thought as he listened to music, unaware that the Black Magic Association's leaders were closing in, intent on capturing him after tracking him for over an hour. Later that night, on a remote mountain, as midnight neared and the wind picked up, two figures sat outside a tent. The man and woman huddled on a blanket, bundled in thick jackets against the biting cold, gazing up at the cloudy sky. The woman broke the silence, questioning whether he had lied to her, no stars were visible, and she doubted there'd be a meteor shower tonight. He simply touched his nose, smiling and assuring her it was real, he'd checked, and tonight's rare meteor shower was a once in a thousand years event. She searched the sky, her hands rubbing together for warmth as the chill settled in, casting a wary glance his way. Anne, as he was called, noticed her shiver and extended his hands, offering a gentle smile as he suggested they warm up in the tent. She hesitated, but seeing his warm gesture, she smiled back and accepted, her trust hesitantly growing. Secretly, he knew this night was no accident, he'd chosen it to keep her close. Just then, she gasped, pointing to the sky. A golden meteor streaked across the heavens, its glow reflecting in her eyes, filling her with awe. She turned to him, excitement lighting up her face as she whispered that he hadn't lied after all. As Anne looked up, he felt a rare wonder rise within him, 
his usual confidence momentarily replaced by quiet amazement. For once, he was at a loss for words. He turned to her, a spark of vulnerability in his eyes, wondering if he had stumbled upon something far beyond his plan. Something blazing, encased in a golden aura, streaked across the sky. As it approached, Lewin could only stand in awe, the radiant energy overwhelming him as he faced the brilliance head-on. But then, he noticed something sinister, within the golden star, a malevolent red energy began to swirl, transforming the meteor's glow into something darker and more intense. As the meteor hurtled toward him, a fierce collision of energies erupted in the heavens, releasing a blinding golden light. The explosion echoed across the land, visible for miles. Demand, observing from afar, scrambled for his telescope, shielding his eyes from the blinding light as he peered through the lens. Confusion and amazement crossed his face, this was no ordinary meteor shower. As he watched, he realized that it wasn't a meteor at all, it was a figure, seemingly human, descending from the sky enveloped in golden light. The figure struck the earth with tremendous force, sending shockwaves through the ground. Dust and debris scattered, revealing a man in a white shirt calmly brushing the dirt from his shoulder. Lewin felt a chill as he recognized this powerful stranger as an expert from the Black Magic Society. The stranger's aura shifted, his golden energy transforming into a swirling red vortex that surrounded him like a storm descending from the sky. Lewin stood firm, preparing himself, as the figure locked eyes with him, a gaze filled with deadly intent. Suddenly, multiple copies of the stranger began to form, each gaining speed as they closed in on Lewin, preparing to attack. Lewin's body emitted a cool blue energy, his expression calm as he stood unmoved. Blue flames radiated around him, shaping themselves into a clone of his own, and with precise movements, he counted the advancing duplicates. Within moments, Lewin's clone dismantled the copies as if they posed no challenge, his eyes reflecting a strange blend of admiration and satisfaction. You're impressive, Samandina, he acknowledged with a respectful smile as she emerged, her aura intensifying with every step. She approached him, the energy around her body growing fiercer, until it seemed to blend with the very elements around them. Lewin realized that her progression from a level 8 to a level 9 martial saint was near, her power was on the cusp of transcending, reaching a realm where mental and spiritual energy fused completely with the natural world. As they faced off, the ground trembled, and the air crackled with energy. Both combatants understood that this encounter went beyond a simple battle, it was a test of their mastery over forces that few could comprehend, each striving to harness the ultimate connection between earth, spirit, and sky. As Samandina advanced, channeling the universe's energy into her being, she sensed the final step in her martial path was within reach. She glanced at Lu Xian, understanding now why so many had fallen before him. But Lu Xian only gave a faint, dismissive smile. Is that all you have? He asked, closing his eyes briefly, almost amused. His words ignited a spark in Samandina, she was far from finished. With a daring grin, she raised her hand skyward, summoning an immense sphere of energy that lit the air around her. Her power surged, and a magic circle materialized beneath her, casting crimson and violet shadows. In a burst of lightning, her form transformed, a fusion of human and unicorn, with a horn gleaming on her forehead and powerful claws radiating energy. Her aura pulsed wildly, reaching out like tendrils, as she prepared to unleash her strength. In a blur of motion, she struck, her speed almost beyond perception. Her powerful kick connected with Lu Xiang's chest, sending him spiraling into the air. Appearing above him, she brought down a fierce blow, her energy slamming him earthward and fracturing the ground beneath him. Not stopping there, she channeled a wave of purple energy into a massive arc, which rippled through the air, targeting the crater where Lu Xiang lay. As smoke filled the air, she began to smile, certain she had finished him. But as the haze lifted, her confidence faded, Lu Xiang was gone. His voice cut through the silence, mocking her, asking if that transformation had really taken her to a higher level. A shiver ran through her as she realized her full strength hadn't even scratched him. Emerging from the shadows, Lu Xiang's body now blazed with a golden light. His calm and unyielding gaze met hers, filling her with an unfamiliar fear. Without hesitation, he reached out, grasping her hand with an unbreakable grip. Power surged through his arm, energy swelling around them both. 
you've exhausted your purpose here, he said with a chilling smile, golden flames flickering at his fingertips. With a final surge of power, Lu Xiang prepared to strike, aiming to end this clash and ascend to the ultimate heights of his martial path, leaving Samandina powerless before him.